on the feast of St. Joseph the Workman. Blessed are all who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. By the labor of your hands you shall eat. Blessed are you, and blessed will you be. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, on this first Friday of the month of Our Lady, the month of May, it's our joy to celebrate the feast of her husband, St. Joseph, specifically as St. Joseph the Working Man. This is the ecclesiastical version of Labor Day, and so today we pray for all workers, especially those who need to find good employment. Let us honor the faithful foster father of Jesus today by now humbly acknowledging our sins before the Lord. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my, in my thoughts, thoughts and in my words, words in, in what I have done, done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, creator of all things, who laid down for the human race the law of work, graciously grant that, by the example of St. Joseph under his, and under his patronage, we may complete the work you set us to do and attain the rewards you promise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing murderous threats against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus that if he should find any men or women who belonged to the way, he might bring them back to Jerusalem in chains. On his journey, as he was nearing Damascus, a light from the sky suddenly flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard the voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, Who are you, sir? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, for they heard the voice but could not, could not see one. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. For three days he was una unable to see, and he neither ate nor drank. There was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias, and the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight and ask at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is there praying. And in a vision, he said, a man named Ananias came in, in and laid his hands on him that he may regain his sight. But Ananias replied, Lord, I have heard from many sources about this man 
what evil things he has done to your holy ones in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to imprison all who call upon your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for this man is a chosen instrument of mine to carry out my name before the Gentiles, kings and children of Israel. And I will show him what he will have to suffer for my name. As Ananias went and entered the house, laying his hands on him, he said, Saul, my brother, the Lord has sent me. Jesus, who appeared to you on the way by which you came, that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, things like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. He got up and was baptized, and when he had eaten, he recovered his strength. He stayed some days in, with the disciples in Damascus, and he began at once to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out, Go out to, all to all the world, world and tell, tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go out, Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is his kindness towards us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out, Go out to all the world and tell the good news. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus came to his native place and taught the people in our synagogue. They were astonished and said, Where did this man get such wisdom and mighty deeds? Is he not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother named Mary and his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? And not, and not his sisters all with us? Where did this man get all this? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and in his own house. And he did not work many mighty deeds there because of their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, my brothers and sisters, as the Second World War was di dying down, uh, Roosevelt, Churchill, and Stalin got together. I think it was at Potsdam or Yalta, one of those places. And they pretty much could see the handwriting on the wall that they were going to win the war. And how would they basically carve up the world after the war was over? And was handed over to Stalin's tender mercies, 10 Catholic countries. And so after the war, the Iron Curtain fell. And all of a sudden, the Catholic Church was persecuted under communism, as it had never been under the Nazis or even the Roman Empire. It was a horrible, horrible situation. Communism, the most extreme form of brutal socialism, was imposed on these poor peoples. And as a consequence, the nations were plunged into darkness. Well, the big commie feast day was May the 1st. That was their May Day. That was their big Labor Day, the celebration of, you know, the tool-making animal, as Karl Marx described the human race. And so they had their big celebrations. And, of course, the Catholics, faithful Catholics, didn't want to take part in this because, you know, we, we don't believe in this stuff. So Pope Pius XII, good and holy man that he was, decided to do them a favor. He declared... He promulgated a brand new feast day, the feast day of St. Joseph the Working Man, and it would be May 1st, the same day as the commie big celebration day. And so while the communists were celebrating that, the Catholics were celebrating the feast of St. Joseph the Workman. Kind of the same thing, but looking at it from a totally different angle. We understand that even in the Garden of Eden, 
there was work that needed to be done. The, the fruit didn't pick itself from the trees. Uh, the meat didn't cook itself, you know, or, or sla- the animals didn't slaughter themselves. Somebody had to do that. There was work that needed to be done. But it was never God's plan that that work would be drudgery. It would be the sort of thing you just, you know, break your back, and in the end, you, for not for much of a good purpose. That was all destroyed by original sin, God's original plan. Now we understand that through the exercise of human labor, now that Jesus Christ has been with us, we can actually perfect the flaws that were inherent in creation because of our original sin. And so as Catholics, we see ourselves as faithful servants of Christ, willing to work hard to make the world a better place. And that really is ultimately what the example of St. Joseph is all about that we gather here to honor him, to worship the Lord, but to dedicate ourselves to his service by serving his people whatever way we can. Uh, There's a kind of people who work and hate it, and they just don't like the thing they do. And there's other people who do it, you know, out of joy, understanding that we're here serving God. They say that if you really enjoy your work, you'll never work a day the rest of your life. In other words, your work will never be drudgery. Your work will always be something that, you know, gives you a a sense of purpose and meaning, a deep down satisfaction. And that's how we Catholics embrace our responsibilities and the jobs we have to do every day. I'd like to think that a Catholic carpenter, for example, is a better carpenter than a non-Catholic one, that a Catholic doctor is a more faithful and and zealous servant of his people. Uh, Whatever profession, whatever job, even if it's slinging burgers at McDonald's, that you do it with a real uh, attitude of service of making the world a better place. And in the end, my brothers and sisters, that's what the the witness of Joseph and Jesus was all about. Jesus came into this world as a working man, as all the apostles were working men. They were fishermen, they were tax collectors, they were some other thing. We don't know what Judas did for a living, do we? It's interesting. Uh, (laughs) It would be interesting to find out what he actually did, if anything. The whole idea is that we look upon our employment as a way of serving God. That's the lesson of St. Joseph the Workman on this great ecclesiastical Labor Day. And I thank you for listening. Lord, we cry out to you now and ask our brother Joseph to join his prayers to ours as we seek to obtain from the Lord these favors. For Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all church leaders, that they will guide us to the holiness of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The civil leaders throughout the world, especially those in our land, they will work to bring up peace and justice and safety for all people, and especially to protect those people who are affected by the coronavirus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear. For all the poor, sick, and elderly, if they will have their needs fulfilled, especially the protection that they need in this time of crisis, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. <clears throat> For all laborers, that they do good work in their jobs, and those who are unemployed or underemployed, they will find suitable employment soon. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. And for all those who have died, over their parish, family, and friends, and those who have no one to pray for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O Heavenly Father, as you provided St. Joseph to be a great model and teacher and example for our Lord, may he also be so for us, inspiring us to serve your people ever more faithfully. We pray for those who need good employment. These things we ask in Jesus' name, our Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, O Lord, God of all creation, 
your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual treasure. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice and your faith. What a praise the glory of his name. For our good and good of all O God, fount of all mercy, look upon our offerings which we bring before your majesty in commemoration of Saint Joseph, and mercifully grant that the gifts we offer may become the means of protection for those who call upon you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Lift them up, Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and on the commemoration of St. Joseph to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as a spouse to the Virgin Mother of God, and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household, to watch like a father over your only begotten Son, who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together in exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holy. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, Mark, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, 
and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for the reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The And let us pray. Having fed upon heavenly delights, we humbly ask you, O Lord, 
that by St. Joseph's example, cherishing in our hearts the signs of your love, we may ever enjoy the fruit of perpetual peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your light. Thanks be to God. We now have the litany of St. Joseph. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. God the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, Pray for us. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Renowned offspring of David. Pray for us. Light of patriarchs. Pray for us. Spouse of the Mother of God. Pray for us. Chaste guardian of the Virgin. Pray for us. Foster father of the Son of God. Pray for us. Diligent protector of Christ. Pray for us. Joseph most just. Pray for us. Joseph most chaste. Pray for us. Joseph most prudent. Pray for us. Joseph most strong. Joseph most obedient, pray, pray for us. Joseph most faithful, pray for us. Mirror of patience, pray, pray for us. Lover of poverty, pray, pray for us. Model of artisans, pray, pray for us. Glory of home life, pray, pray for us. Guardian of virgins, pray for us. Pillar of families, pray for us. Solace of the wretched, pray for us. Hope of the sick, pray for us. Patron of the dying, pray for us. Terror of demons, pray for us. Protector of the Holy Church, pray for us. Lamb of God, who takest away the sins of the world, spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takest away the sins of the world, Lamb of God, who takest away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. He made him Lord of all his household, and prince over all his possessions. Let us pray. O God, in thy ineffable providence, thou wert pleased to choose blessed Joseph to be the spouse of thy most holy mother. Grant, we beg thee, that we may be worthy to have him as our intercessor in heaven, whom on earth we venerate as our protector, thou who livest and reignest forever and ever. Amen. Amen. St. Michael, the Archangel, 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 the Archangel